welcome to the third and final part of this presentation of how to use Foresights to navigate technology drivers that produce products consumers want. Part three, I am Susie Badaracco, president of Culinary Tides. So in this third part, we're gonna start with sustainability. So if why is the question, like why sustainable, then your products and packaging are the answer. When you look at the sustainability landscape, it's more complicated than some want to give it credit for, right? You have local. Where is this thing coming from? Seasonal, but who's seasoned? So for instance, if you're living in New York, you're going to be getting citrus from Florida, Texas, outside of the country, right? So season doesn't mean just our seasons. Green, so food waste, growing practices, your packaging, um, corporate culture is actually the newest kid on the block. Corporate culture was not a branch on sustainability before COVID, but now it is. So they are interested in fair wage. Do you have daycare for your people, health insurance? So, and also do you protect your employees, right? From aggression, harassment. So when a, when a corporation nationally announces in the news, hey, we have daycare or we increase our health insurance, they're not doing that to tell their own people in their plant. Their employees know they have it. They're saying it out loud in the news because they understand that consumers will look at them more favorably. That's why they're saying it out loud, right? Ethically, animal welfare, fair trade. Do you care about pollinator health? Your, what are your hiring practices? Uh, and organic, again, is, well, who's certification? Because there's more than one. Going to bring this slide up all at once. Again, in the dark green is the research. The little purple diagram is a different way to express the data. But let's focus on the bullet points for ignorance. We like to talk a lot about uh, different terms in our industry. Consumers don't know what we're talking about. And you have to remember that. So 25% of consumers cannot articulate what makes a product sustainable, period. 60% don't know what carbon neutral means. Another 58%, so in this one study, consumers were given a list of, a mixed list of items. Some were, were from a renewable resource, some were not a renewable resource, and 58% could not identify which ones were renewable. Also, most don't know how to identify a sustainable company. So they don't know if you're sustainable. And I will tell you, uh, Gen Z in particular, if you don't talk about your sustainability efforts, if you um, practice green hushing, I mean, you don't talk about it, Gen Z will just absolutely assume you are not sustainable. They don't think you're not talking about it. Why would you not talk about it? So green hushing, um, we don't recommend it for our clients. So how do you how do you speak to either again your 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 clients or direct to consumer? Sustainable brands and Ipsos actually put out a study. Seventy percent of consumers believe they absolutely can influence your company to do better just because they're buying from you. So I'm going to give you some statements that you think are good to talk about with clients and consumers, but actually they're not. So one term that's definitely out is kind of generic green label statements. Another one is talking about how to market a sustainable practice, uh, mar how marketing a sustainable practice helps your company. You'd think that would be good, but it's not. And the third one is, Promoting how your company's sustainability efforts helps the environment and the community. That sounds good. Turns out it's not, and I'll show you why. So with generic green label statements, what you have to do is you have to explain why something has a green label statement. You have to educate the consumer very simply, but you have to educate them. You cannot just say this is produced sustainably. They won't know what you're talking about, and they're not going to believe you. Marketing how a sustainability practice helps your company. Unfortunately, consumers don't care about you. Your clients don't care about you. They care about how they get to be the hero in the story, right? So what you want to do is market how a sustainable practice helps the consumer or your client by buying that product from you. 
they're helping, right? They're practicing sustainability. And the last one that promoting how your company's sustainability efforts helps the environment and community. Again, one, they probably don't believe you or two, they probably don't care. What you wanna do is empower consumers or your clients that you're selling to, give them the control over bettering the environment or the community by using your products. So in other words, you are not the hero in the consumers or the clients' lives, you are the guide. So consumers or clients, they are the hero in their own lives. What you're doing is you're guiding them to become the hero by buying your products. That puts them in control. Let's look at innovating against the future. So a note about white space. So if there is true white space where no one has produced something in this new territory you've thought of, oftentimes it's because it's a terrible idea. That's why no one's produced something in that area. So you white space also think of it as whatever products you produce, you're, you may be moving laterally into a different territory. That is also white space. So think of white space in that term as well. So what you wanna do is you wanna look at the parents. So I'm gonna give you some parents to consider for inspiration. Okay, regulatory changes. As an inspiration, you wanna definitely watch the changes in food safety regulations and labeling requirements when you're thinking about new technologies, right? Don't wanna walk into something where uh, regulation has just been passed against it. I'll give you an example. There are several states now moving forward and have passed regulations against cellular agricultural products, right? So that is something you might wanna consider sidestepping for the moment. <clears throat> Ingredient innovation. Uh, development of novel ingredients. Think about some of the plant-based alternates, again, cultured meats, cellular ag. Remember, look at government regs because there are already states in this country that are banning them. And also think about food safety advances when you're looking at novel ingredients. Delivery, uh, consumer interaction. How are consumers gonna interact with the delivery process? Is it vending technologies? Is it a packaging technology? Economics. Again, right now, what they're doing is pulling back. So you have to look at incentives, cost reduction, mark, can you expand in the marketplace a different way, a new way? Sustainability, growing awareness. They're growing awareness. They're very consumers are very aware of food waste and packaging practices, also packaging amounts. Those all lead into technologies. Health and nutrition, look at what are functional foods, what are personalized nutrition solutions, what are current diets, what are consumers looking for? Digital technologies, um, integrating AI, machine learning. Also, digital technologies around distribution or marketing, quality control, and even supply chain optimization are all areas for digital. And then think about neighboring industries. Again, look at the diet industry. What is the pharmaceutical industry? Um, both those industries produce products that are, you know, food and beverage products, but they're also producing like supplements, other products that kind of bump up against and actually can use the same or similar technologies that food and beverage is using. So let's look about the future. Positive indicators. So let's say the parents all calm down. So let's say inflation resolves, the economy recovers, US and international political unrest resolves, everything's great going forward. What does that mean for technology? Well, for technology, there's gonna be more money available for technologies to expand, right? So more money will be put into technologies. Also, I will say for consumer drivers, consumers will be calmer and more trusting of technologies if everything else in their life is calmer as well, right? So their level of distrust will go down, their level of feeling safe will go up. 
What happens to health drivers? Uh, typically health drivers will go up because they have money to go to the gym. They have money to spend on more healthful foods. So health drive, and, they, and they're more focused on it. So health drivers go up. Sustainability drivers will remain. So sustainability drivers are always high. It's really the spending. The spending will go back up. And packaging, again, packaging becomes more complex. They want function and they want design. They want to interact with the packaging. They want to learn from the packaging. So packaging becomes um, an equal partner with the food or the beverage to attract a consumer. Let's say the opposite happens. Negative indicators, different future. Inflation remains, recession occurs. U.S. political unrest continues. Military conflict continues. Then what's going to happen to technology? Uh, people are going to be more nervous and not as much money will go into technologies, right? Consumers are also not going to be wanting to experiment with technologies because they are in an even more fearful position. So they pull back on spending on technology and their distrust goes up. Their level of safety goes down if they're in a more of a negative future. Health drivers also go down. So at some point, we kind of stop caring about health and what we're eating. We will opt for saving money over health. Sustainability, the drivers remain high. Sustainability spending drops. Again, it's temporary and it's for financial reasons. And what does it mean for packaging? Packaging goes back to they don't, they will not care as much about design. They care immensely about function. Will this keep the food safe? Can I freeze it? Can I share this product? Is it a big enough package? That's the direction packaging goes. Function is everything. Design kind of goes on the back burner. So final thoughts. Know the birth and life cycle of a trend prior to deciding to enter it so you can foretell how to navigate it. The second thing I would recommend is neither love nor hate a trend. Emotions will fog a trend's true pattern and you may be blindsided when it shifts and trends always shift. And finally, spend more time researching a trend's personality and trajectory than worrying about what your competitors are doing. After all, they may be idiots. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed Navigating Technology Drivers, parts one, two, and three. Um, if you have any questions, absolutely feel free to reach out and contact us. Thank you so much.